Good morning, guys. This is Mr. Sanchez. Today, we will be discussing. I am Joaquin. Yo soy Joaquin by Corky Gonzalez. Um, <clears throat> the poem itself is is about uh, the Mexican American experience um, in the United States and living here. So I'm just going to go through that. Uh, we're going to do text to self. How does the text apply to me? Text to text. How can we relate this specific text? To another text that we've read in the past of trying to make relationships um, between the text and finally we'll be discussing how the text actually applies to the real world um, so you know when I when I first started reading this poem um, in the very first stanza uh, I was hooked right because it was talking about um, being brown and caught up in the world uh, in confusion of a gringo society and 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 to me that really hit home because throughout school when I initially started school here in the United States I felt that way I felt like hey look here we are in the continent of America this is the Americas and we're learning the history of Europe the Europeans um, we learned about the Enlightenment we learned about the Renaissance. We learned about the Baroque time period and so on and so forth. And about what what a great white civilization did what. And the aqueducts in Rome and the Senate in Rome. And, and you know, philo uh, Western philosophy and all these things. And not to say that those aren't valid and they don't have anything to to contribute. But to me it was like well how does this apply to me why is it that we're in a completely different continent and we're discussing Europe's um, history I mean what happened before that here uh, what philosophies what things were going on um, and and it really made me question that way and I had there was a, there was a huge gap between what I believed what I saw and what I felt to what was being taught um, it was really like, hey, do, do we really come from leaders? Did we really do those great things? Did we build the empires they said we did? Did, did And if we did, why is, why is none of that ever talked about? Why is it always like, oh, the savages, the Aztecs used to kill people, or the Native American used to li live in teepees and wear loincloths and all this stuff. And it's, I get it, maybe some of us did, and maybe some of us didn't. But why is that the only thing ever portrayed? Why why do we never talk about the great architecture um, and, and the, the level of industry required to produce these, these I guess, pyramids? And, and you know, why, why is it always white people? That's the way I felt. That's the way I had always felt. Um, and I felt like I couldn't trust anybody at school, any adult at least. I feel like it was just me against the world. And so the poem really kind of hit home. And uh, the more that I read it, it was like, wait, I come from, from civilizations, come from, from family that survived and thrived uh, for 500 years now, almost 500 years now of, of slavery, of being... Of being conquered and being, you know, the genocide that was perpetrated on us, and and the cultural and, and physical genocide, um, but we survived, and we would continue to survive that way. So to me, that's sort of the 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 click that happened in my head when I initially began to read that. Now, for a text to text relation, I know I don't know if you guys remember we uh, we did Tupac's so "A Rose That Grew from Concrete." Now those two poems are really similar, even though they're one of them is more of a narrative poem or an epic, I would call it, even though it's not really an epic. Uh, that's I am Joaquin, and the other one would be um, Tupac's. I guess it would be lyrical poem talking about um, the rose that grew from concrete and how it was able to defy nature's laws and and overcome all these great obstacles to grow out of a slab of concrete. Now. In Corky, Corky's poem, he's talking about that specific thing, but as a culture, as a nation, as a peoples, how do us as brown people, how do we as brown people 
survive how have we survived and have grown through the obstacles placed in front of us by our oppressors how have we pushed ourselves and and in in a way that's exactly what tupac is talking about right he's talking about a flower that grew from concrete and and the way to fight nature's laws now i'm not saying that oppression is a law of nature but what i'm saying is that we as as people of color have become so oppressed that it's kind of become the norm that's that's the normal um status right the status quo we work they would get rich uh we get a paycheck and uh economic servitude uh to a certain extent um anyways uh, that's essentially what the poem is also talking about, though, right? How did we overcome a genocide? How did African Americans overcome slavery? Um, by breathing. And, and, and what I mean by breathing, it was by, by putting one foot in front of the other and, 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 and learning to keep your hope. Learning to keep your hope and learning to keep your, your imagination vivid and, and learning to... To, to have faith that one day things would be different and and they have they've changed I'm not saying all issues have been resolved but some of them have so next uh, kind of kind of a text to text to world in that way um, for me all these three kind of mesh together I know we're not really supposed to but in reality um, when you relate the text to yourself uh, you're part of the world. And you see the world through your experiences, so in a way you're you're relating it to to the world. Um, so, anyways, as I was reading this, uh, like I said, there there was a lot of things that came to mind. Why why are we not taught about these great civilizations? Why are these great civilizations always ignored? And why do they always portray us as savages? Why were the Aztecs always ripping the heart and still beating, ah, eating it, and the whole bits like Mel Gibson does um, in uh, Apocalypto? How, do, how does that play in, and, and how does that taint the way the world sees us and the way we see ourselves? Um, like, again, why, why is it always a perpetuation of, of a certain criminal or evil element of the brown person, of the savage um, you're either a angry, violent savage, or you're a noble savage. And if you're a noble savage, then you're subject to be oppressed because you're too nice. But if you're the angry savage, you're subject to be oppressed anyways and possibly killed because you scare them too much. So that's always occurring, right? We're either portrayed one way or the other, and not not so much now, but before definitely. And then when we start getting into to the Aztecs and 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 the the mayans and all this whenever you say you're mexican or you're say from latin america most people exotify you right you say oh you know you must be come you must come from aztec ancestry or you must come from mayan ancestry and it's always aztec or mayan or, or if you're peruvian you might be inca and that's it just like if you're native american here in the united states some people say oh you must be cherokee or you must be apache or you must be navajo and it's like why if there's so much variety even within our people, why why are we always labeled with specific category? Like I'm not Aztec. I have people in my family that still speak Purépecha. But if you tell somebody, oh, I'm Purépecha, they have no clue what you're talking about. They're like, huh? Uh, you're Mexican, you must be Aztec or Mayan. Um, so, you know, that's kind of kind of how the, 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 the text actually made me think about the way we see our world and the way I see myself and the way the world sees me. Um, so there you have it, guys. That's uh, a little bit of how I see Corky Romano's... Um, Corky Romano. <laughs> That's a movie. How I see Corky Gonzalez's um, uh, I Am Joaquin. Anyways, have a good day.